Hey everyone, in this video, we will compare ChatGPT, Claude, Perplexity, and the new AI called DeepSeek. So before we get into the comparison, here are a few disclaimers. Just to kind of keep it fair to all users, this video will compare only the free uh, tiers of all of these AI models. So no paid plans, also no power use cases, in the sense that if you are using these AIs to solve specific problems like content creation, script writing, coding, we're not going to be exploring these things. Uh, so we'll be looking at everyday use cases that most users usually use these AIs for. And with that, let's get started. So first I have ChatGPT open. The free plan usually gets you access to the ChatGPT for everyday tasks. Also, you will be able to attach files, connect to your Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive. You would be able to use DALI search on the web and you'll also be able to use Canvas, which is essentially ChatGPT's split screen mode that lets you edit as you go or like perform incremental edits to a project. And this is basically just a direct button for accessing the web search. You also get to use the voice mode in the free tier. We got some suggestions here and that's about it. Now ChatGPT free version still allows you to customize your GPT. So this allows you to give ChatGPT context that you want standard across all your questions. All of the information that you provide here combines itself as a standard prompt that goes along with any and every chat that you do with ChatGPT. So over at Claude, it looks very similar. I'm using the free model here. You have access to this one specific Claude model, which is the Haiku. It gives you a few options to just kind of choose how the model will respond. Like for example, normal, concise, explanatory, or formal. You can also create and edit these styles. Claude lets you scre uh, capture screenshots and also upload files. There's a maximum of 20 files, 30 megabytes each. Now Claude as well, you get to give it some standard context as well. Just like you have your full name and you also get to use artifacts prompt examples and chat CSV chat suggestions. Artifacts is just like ChatGPT's Canvas. Now over at Perplexity, it lets you attach files, but it limits you at three a day. And same goes with ProSearch, it limits you at three a day. It also has a focus mode. So if you were to search the web, ac academic papers, math questions, writing video or socials. So since a search is their specialty, they give you a few options to do those searches. The free tier in Perplexity also gives you access to spaces where you can work on specific projects with, you know, specific files, instructions, and obviously you collaborate with others as well. And lastly, we have the newest AI from China, which is DeepSeek. Now, DeepSeek only has a free tier uh, model. Now, I also made a full tutorial video, so if you want to check that out, link will be in the description. This gives you access to a reasoning model, web search, and upload files for text extraction only. And that's about all there is to it. I'll just start with the classic AI question. This is something a lot of AI models used to get wrong for a while. So I just wanted to see how all four of them will respond. So ChatGPT is correct. Claude gets it wrong. Perplexity gets it wrong. DeepSeek not only gets it, but it actually goes through a full explanation as to how it came up with that answer. So ChatGPT and DeepSeek wins, whereas Perplexity and Claude gets this question wrong. All right, so the second thing we're going to test out, this is a basic use case, is just email rewriting, whether it's professionally and stuff like that. So what I wanted to do with this specific use case is I said, you know, I bought camera, I want refund, camera lens, not blur background, camera, not good for price, write professional email with asking refund, be creative so that I can get the refund. Now, I specifically wrote this in broken English because I want to see how well it pits together the pieces. I also gave it very little context and asked it to be creative just to kind of see, you know, how good are these AIs when it comes to solving this one specific problem. Email rewriting is not really a difficult thing for these AI, but I just wanted it to work most that it can on it. So let's see. Let's start with ChatGPT and see where we go. All right, so this is what ChatGPT responded. Obviously, feel free to pause and read the whole email if you want to. Based on my understanding, it wrote it really professionally. However, it did not add anything else outside of the context I gave it. It basically talked about the same thing. This camera lens does not produce a desired background blur. Obviously, it talked about it, you know, it being the bouquet effect and just kind of reiterated on the same thing to fill up the email. So it did the job. 
did not add anything extra from a creative perspective. All right, now with Claude, just a quick thing. I changed this from concise to formal because obviously I wanted it written in a formal way. Again, feel free to pause and read the whole email if you want to, but essentially the same thing. It talks about the bouquet effect. It writes it professionally. I like how it just you know gives you some pointers as well. I like how it includes some key concerns, and it seems like it got a little more creative in the sense that it added significant discrepancy between product marketing claims and the actual performance. It talks about lens quality to the product's price range as well. Now let's try with perplexity. So yeah, perplexity seems to have done a really good job with not only just writing the email, but also like, you know, added some really interesting elements. Like I've consulted with several professional photographers who have confirmed that the lens quality is below par from its price point and talks about missing out on potential client work and resulting in financial loss. And so this really, uh, you know, emphasizing on the financial loss part to ask for the refunds. So pretty good so far. Again, with DeepSeek, it's more in line with ChatGPT, where it just kind of stays within the context. Do not explore any additional creative pathway and pretty much to the point. So moving on to the third test where I think a lot of us on a daily use case, if we're writing anything with AI, we want it to sound more human-like. I think that's something that since all these AI models came out, that's one thing a lot of people have always wanted. And so we're going to try that. Now, the only way I know of making it do that is essentially to say that, you know, write it in a way that a human would, and then also include burstiness and perplexity, these words. So burstiness is a, a statistical way of saying that, you know, keep the sentence length inconsistent. So one could be small, one could be large and stuff like that. And perplexity is just, you know, so that the thoughts are not very concise and stuff like that. Again, this is what usually gets it to sound the most human-like. So let's try it and see where we go. All right, so this is what ChatGPT output it. It's not bad. It's like a standard blog article. Feel free to pause the video and read. It's all right. I mean, I, I don't think it's very human-like. Like if I were to read this, of course, every technological leap comes with its own set of challenges and AI is no exception. The ethical questions surrounding its use are perplexing as the technology itself. Who's responsible when an autonomous car makes the wrong decision? How do you prevent AI from perpetuating biases? that exists in its training data. Does that sound very human? You be the judge. Now we'll try this with Claude. All right, so um, pause the video if you wanna read through it. Here's the sound test. Uh, the economic implications are staggering. Industries from manufacturing to finance are being completely reimagined. Predictive algorithms are transforming risk assessment while machine learning models are optimized supply chains with an efficiency that makes traditional management strategies look like horse and buggy technology. So again, you be the judge. Here's with perplexity. Now with perplexity, there's two things at play. One is it did a web search. So it has the latest and greatest information. So just keep that in mind. Now with DeepSeek, this is the output. Feel free to pause the video and read this as well. Now, obviously, I'm not sharing too much of my thoughts on this. I want you guys to let me know what you guys think, which one was most human-like. Let me know in the comments and I'll respond to it with my pick. All right. Okay. So the fourth test is going to be around web search. I think that's one of the things people use AI uh, a lot for on a day-to-day -day basis. We're going to test two things. The first one is how accurate it is at finding the latest information. And second is the quality and quantity of the sources it looks at. So the first one we're going to try is this one. Everton is a football club in the English Premier League. And the new manager was appointed in January 2025. And I just wanted to see, because it's so new, if it gets pulled up by any of these. So I have the question here. I'll turn on web search. All right. So great. So it looked at a bunch of places, got the answer. Perfect. So Claude does not have web search capabilities. So obviously it didn't make a search. As you can see, it's still referring to its old manager, which is Sean Deitch. Next, you have Perplexity. Perplexity got it right as well. Lastly, you have DeepSeek. I'll turn on the search. And DeepSeek got it right as well. So again, test this out. And when it comes to accuracy, obviously, if you're looking for more specific information that is not all over the internet, those would be better use cases to try out. 
So now to check the quality and quantity of the searches. So what I'll ask it is to conduct an extensive search of today's AI news and list them with date and source. I'll have the search on. Here's what DeepSea came up with. So here's the results for that. A lot of these news are not from today. Today is January 26th. As you can see, it says 23, 21, at least it's honest with the date. If you click here, you are going to be able to see all the places it looked at. Bloomberg, CNN, Reuters, MIT, TechCrunch, Forbes, CNN, Economic Times, New York Times. So the quality seems to be pretty good. The quantity, it looked at 50 places. I can see uh, a news from India as well. I see a news from China. So I looked all over the world and I would say the quantity is good too because it looked at at least 50 sources. Next, we'll try with ChatGPT. Same question. I have the search on. Now, this one is saying today's date and yesterday's date here. However, I can tell you these news are not from today. They are from a couple of days back. So the dates are incorrect. That's definitely something I can confirm. But it could be that the sources it picked up mentions today's date. So I don't know. I can't really blame the AI without looking into that. Now, looking at the sources here, Business Insider, New York Post, The Guardian, uh, CTVs. So we definitely have less than 50 sources here. The quality is not bad. I wouldn't say as good as DeepSeek's, but not bad. Now we'll try the same with Perplexity. Yeah, same thing. I don't think they're getting the dates right. However, I think the sources where they're pulling it from, I think these guys are just reusing the same news multiple times and hence, you know, you have the state showing up and that's probably the reason. As for sources, it has 12 of them, Halifax, Investopedia, Exploding Topics, Reddit, Goodreads. Yeah, definitely has an interesting choice of sources. Here's the thing though, the news is pretty much cons uh, all across, you know, Deep Seek, ChatGPT and Perplexity. It's just the dates. DeepSeek was very much specific. You know, this is when it came out. This is when it came out. They still, it still reported the same news. But I think these guys, they're all saying these are today's news, which is not true. And I'm not doing this with Claude just because, like I said, Claude doesn't have access to web search. Now, you do get some pro searches free every single day. So if you have that turned on, what would be the difference? So a couple of things, I did the search in two steps. So it did a search first and then it did a wrapping up. From a sources point of view, it has eight sources. So it's less than the non-pro search. And so, yeah, I just wanted to show you that as well. So the last test I got is more of a you know, creative problem solving type of thing. So again, I think this is a very general question that many people can have, which is that I'm asking it to build a, a workout routine. I'm talking about the type of split that I want, which is going to be a push, pull, and leg. And then I also want to work on abs and core, however possible. Every workout must also include stretching and yoga for warm up and cardio to finish. The total time inside the gym must not exceed 1.5 hours max. I have issues with my lower back, so consider it for a leg day. So uh, I want a workout plan, but I'm giving it a lot of like things that I want in it and certain limitations as well. And I just want to see how the AI does with this information, All right? So this is what it came up with. Not bad. It seems to have included a little bit of yoga in the stretches, completing all of this in one and a half hours. If I'm racing through it, probably body weight squats. It did consider the lower back pain as well. So it gave me some modified workouts. So that's a good thing. Now trying the same thing with ChatGPT. Okay, so with ChatGPT, I think this is pretty good as well. A lot cleaner, definitely. This, I think, you know, based on the time it allocates, this at least looks more doable in one and a half hours. Also takes in the lower back pain into consideration. So yeah, not bad. Now let's try with Claude. All right, so Claude responded with their artifacts, as you can see, and this is the same as ChatGPT Canvas as well. So you c could do like conversational edits, so you can just like have a conversation and it'll keep editing parts of it that you don't like. You could like, you know, highlight portions and ask it to improve it and explain. So I j I'm just showing this to you just so that you have an understanding of how to work with artifacts and Canvas over at ChatGPT's end as well. 
similar features. ChatGPT Canvas has a couple other things you can do in the Canvas as well. But yeah, try it out. So going back to this, I think Claude did a pretty good job as well. Consider the lower back pain. However, you know, I don't think I can do eight workouts uh, under 60 minutes. That's a lot, you know, for a one and a half hour workout plan. But yeah, that's what we have. And here's the last one with perplexity. Now, perplexity is not an AI that I'll use for these kind of questions just because it's very good at web searching. It's not very good at these kind of things. But as you can see, it just, it doesn't really break down, you know, what kind of yoga or stretching that I should do. It looks up on the internet and it just like sort of summarizes a bunch of different plans from the internet and just gives me something that makes sense. I can see that it did take in the lower back pain into consideration. It said the leg day is designed to be avoiding exercises like traditional squats and deadlifts. So yeah, again, I wouldn't use perplexity for these kind of questions, but there you have it. And lastly, I just wanted to show you with the same question, if I wanted to use the deep think, which is their R1 model that does the reasoning. All right, so right off the bat, as you can see, it thought for 11 seconds before coming up with the answer. And what I really like is that it really thinks like how one would think. And I find it very human-like as well. So it starts with like, okay, the user wants to do a workout routine. First, I need to structure each day into warm-up, main workout, abs, core, and cardio. Time management is key here. Let's break down each section duration. It, it looks at the you know, dynamic stretches and yoga poses for the relevant muscle groups for that day. What would be the focus for a push day? What would be the focus for a pull day, a leg day? What kind of like, you know, abs and core muscle groups that we'll be working out every day? Stretching at the end of uh, every session, uh, lower back safety. It talks about that as well. Um, it looks at rest periods as well. And I just wanted to show you that based on all of this thinking, what kind of answer it would come up with. All right, so I think this is way more doable in one and a half hours. And I guess some extra information is also there because it thought through the problem. So I wanted to show you this because the only thing that's comparable to this is the O1 model from ChatGPT. And that's on the ChatGPT Plus plan that you have to pay $20 for. This is absolutely free for DeepSeek. And if you're using this AI, you can use this as well. So just keep that in mind. Although the goal of this video is to compare four different AIs, it's not to just use one AI for everything. I just wanted to show you the different features and hopefully you have found different AI that excels at different things that you may want to use them for. I would appreciate if you liked the video and shared it with others. Also keep in mind, I did not compare Gemini with this. If you want, let me know in the comments and I can make another video comparing Gemini as well. I personally only use Gemini for YouTube titles and stuff like that because it's trained on YouTube and Google data. I have the ChatGPT Plus account, so I use ChatGPT the most. And I've also started using DeepSeek a lot, especially their R1 model. And lastly, if you guys want me to do a comparison video for, you know, writing code. So for example, ChatGPT versus DeepSeek versus Claude, you know, which one's the best at generating code and helping you build applications and stuff. I can do so as well. And with that, uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.